Hello everyone, Namaste and Salaam Alaikum. Hi, this is Maria Khan, your master teacher of biology here at Vedantu. Welcome to the session guys and today is yet another topic, interesting topic that's menstrual hygiene. So people, whenever we talk about the basic needs of an individual, we always talk about food, clothing, shelter. Lately, we are also talking about education. But when are we going to consider menstrual hygiene as the basic necessity, which is must for every girl, for every woman? Every woman must possess the right to bleed safely and in a dignified manner. In most of the places of our country, girls, women are ridiculed. They are looked down just because they are menstruating. They are not considered to be pure enough just because they are menstruating. They drop out of school just because they are menstruating. They are not having an access to correct information to menstrual hygienic products and so many other stuffs. So let's educate ourselves and let's take a step towards practicing a good menstrual hygiene. So yes, let's get started. But prior to that, like, share, subscribe and post me a yo. So let's get started. So guys, when we talk about menstrual hygiene, first of all, why is it necessary to discuss this to have a session around menstrual hygiene? The answer lies in low awareness. 70% of the menstruating mothers, they themselves consider menstruation as dirty. If the mother herself is menstruating, she will not enter into the kitchen or they might not enter into a temple. They might not touch holy books. Uh, they might not cook. And moreover, they also impose all these ideologies on their daughters, maybe daughter-in-laws or maybe other women who are present in their homes. And this scenario must change at least by 2021. Now it must change, right? And then 71% of adolescent girls remain unaware about even up to the, till the first period. Like I want to ask all the girls around me, where you been educated, informed about menstruation and good menstruating practices till you experienced menarche? If I talk about my own self, no. My mother never opened up regarding this to me. I got to know from some of my friends and all the information as a teenager when you uh, get it from people around you, either the information is incorrect or it is incomplete. And in both the cases, it's not good enough. You know? When there is a new change going to happen in our bodies, when there are some biological changes which are going to take place, we all should be well aware of it so that we are well prepared and we don't uh, panic at that particular point of time. right? So every girl must be educated at their homes by their parents. It should be an open healthy discussion at the homes, even at the dining table. It's not a sin to discuss these topics openly with everyone around us. This topic must be included even in schools. Yes, all the 6th graders, 7th graders, all the school girls, okay, uh, the girls who are studying in secondary section, they must be educated about it. So that a fuss around uh, menarche and the menstrual practices should not be created. It should not bring the moral down of a girl in any manner. I remember uh, I was in grade 9 and it was uh, maybe, I remember I was maybe in grade 9 and it would have been my second or third uh, menstrual cycle and uh, I wasn't aware about uh, the frequency of a menstruation or anything of that sort. My mother did not tell me much about it and I wasn't prepared enough. I was not having sanitary napkin with me and I was sitting in a tuition class and uh, it all started, I started bleeding and uh, soon within no time my clothes were stained. Uh, I was terribly panicked. I told my friend and then she uh, secretly told this to the teacher and then uh, I left the class along with my friend. I went to her home, I washed my clothes. Even she was not having any uh, sanitary product at her place that she could offer me. All she could offer me is I can wash my clothes at her place. Then I left from her place, I was crying and I sat in an auto rickshaw. I I got down at my destination and even the rickshawala was looking at me in a ridiculed manner because the auto rickshaw seat was stained. A ninth grader child 
who was not aware much about menstruation i was so depressed so panic i was crying profusely i tore few pages from my notebook and i wiped the auto rickshaw seat i apologized him and then i left and this is just one example there must be hundreds and thousands and lakhs of girls who would have been ridiculed in this manner think about the psychology of a girl what happens what goes through her mind and as a result many of the girls skip going to schools skip going to uh, skip uh, attending their coaching classes overall skip their education and is this right enough like just because a girl has stepped into her puberty just because a girl has started menstruating is it right that she should uh, stay away from education no right what is the need of the r need of the r is spreading awareness spreading correct information if you see this graph over here most of the states show high percentages where in the girls are literally unaware about menstruation even till their first periods and that's something to be worried about hai na so when a girl experiences menarche what is the frequency of the menstruation will it be experienced per month once in 6 months what is it the girls must be fairly educated if not mothers if not teachers if not the society then whom who is going to educate these girls it is our moral responsibility to spread awareness isn't it yes it is so when i was talking about the dropout rates from school so currently we have 355 million women menstruating women in our country and then a good chunk of population is of the school going girls out of that population 23 million girls drop out from school annually due to lack of menstrual hygiene management and when i say lack of menstrual hygiene management chalo let's take my example only my teacher would have offered me a sanitary napkin but she did probably she was herself not having it coaching classes or maybe schools they must have a repository of sanitary napkins to offer the menstruating girls in case of emergencies that wasn't the facility back then at least it should be now the sanitary napkins provided to the girls in cases of emergencies must be free of cost at least this much uh, cost we can bear it for humanity right we should not be charging those innocent tiny little girls who are already under a panic mode who are already running an emergency we should demand them money and most importantly there must be washroom facility toilet facility i told that i went to my friend's home to wash my stained clothes it means there was no washroom in the coaching class so there should be good washrooms sanitary uh, uh, places where the girls can go access it and have a menstrual hygiene management practiced right so all these things should be there must be there must be there okay so reasons for drop out as i mentioned one lack of sanitary napkins they should be easily made available okay second lack of functional toilets there should be washrooms where the girls can go and uh, practice menstrual hygiene okay third thing there should not be a stigma around menstruation there should not be anything uh, going on at a secret level discussion regarding menstruation it should be open discussion it's not a sin it's not a crime it it's not something abnormal it's a process which every girl experiences in her life it's a change which repeats every month in a girl's body and it's absolutely normal it's a normal biological change and there should be open discussion around it right many a times uh, people uh, are uh, not welcoming the menstrual stains i should not be saying welcoming but uh, the menstrual stains are looked at with an odd perspective like please cover up your dress it's been stained why suppose if uh, i i fall down if i collapse if i get injured and if i start bleeding 
Will you look at my blood stains in an odd manner? No. It's a normal injury. It's a normal blood. It's a normal stain. You won't look at it in a weird manner. In the same manner, if a girl has got stained accidentally or even maybe due to heavy bleeding or any, any of the causes, any of the causes, the girl should not be ridiculed. She should not be looked upon oddly. Right? We should consider it all as normal. All as normal. It happens. Hey na? What a big deal. Hey na? And then lack of sanitary napkins. This is a big issue. If you say ki your schools are uh, having sanitary napkins available, I appreciate. But then only 12%, only 12% of women, women in our country have an access to sanitary napkins. Means 88% Indian women can't have an access to a sanitary napkin. So guys, how many of you are actually using sanitary napkins? If yes, good enough. If no, then what else are you using? We should take uh, the responsibility of our reproductive health and menstrual hygiene is a part of it. So right, we should all have dignified menstrual cycle. So, but your lack of sanitary napkins is something that needs to be addressed. You know, 42.6 million menstruating women. Okay. Only this many percent of women who use sanitary napkin today. Okay. The rest all are not using it. So, but you, what can we use it? What are the options available in the market? So, the first choice in most of the women of our country is a piece of cloth. Now, usually 100% cotton clothes are being used. But again, uh, is it clean enough? Uh, is it uh, uh, replaced or is it washed, cleaned, uh, dried and then reused? Or is it used and then discarded? If we are discarding it, where and how are we discarding it? Everything needs to be addressed. Hena? We should have a scientific approach towards it. Many girls experience rashes and allergies by using cloth. If the uh, cloth is damp enough, moist enough, uh, it can invite vaginal infections or uh, maybe rashes in the private parts. So yes, is uh, making use of cloth still a good choice? And then sanitary napkin, widely recommended because comparatively less number of side effects okay uh, sanitary napkins are made up of maybe organic or uh, inorganic uh, materials absorbent materials maybe cotton or a blend of cotton and other materials okay and uh, they can be wore for maybe five to eight eight hours and then it has to be replaced okay or disposal is something which we must consider okay uh, like uh, Pune Municipal Corporation had run a red dot campaign like uh, when we discard the menstrual uh, materials like menstrual hygiene materials maybe a sanitary napkin or a piece of cloth uh, dumping that directly into the dustbin is not a good choice because we are exposing the Safai Karmacharis to hand pick them and eventually they are exposed to the microbes right so instead take a cloth back put the material in it seal it and uh, with a marker put a red dot so it means that you have uh, sent out a message ki yes uh, it is a menstrual hygiene product and it has to be uh, disposed of in a different manner without uh, exposing any third person to the risk of infection right so yes uh, that one also needs to consider over here and then tampons Dampens are also made up of high absorbent material, maybe just cotton or maybe cotton plus rayon and they need to be inserted into the vaginal passage. Uh, as they absorb the fluid, they expand and that's the reason why they prevent leakages. Okay, but again, uh, a problem with tampons is uh, not everyone would experience, but yes, if they are made up of a high absorbent material, then they will absorb excess of uh, vaginal fluids and the vaginal uh, moisture or the microflora over there can get disturbed. So yes, uh, one should use a tampon which is made up of a low absorbent material. Okay, tampons which can uh, stay long as long as for 12 hours or maybe more than that should be 
should not be used and then locally prepared napkins are available uh, reusable napkins basically cloth napkins which can be washed which can be dried and which can be reused okay they are also available but then again there are so many women who don't use anything or maybe uh, there are uh, women who use ash and uh, bricks and so many other unhygienic products so guys today we are here in 2021 and uh, there are some some stuffs that we can work around so that every woman every girl in our country has a safe and easy access to good menstrual hygienic products okay the very first thing we should educate ourselves and we should spread awareness around the people uh, we should spread awareness uh, uh, awareness in the people around us okay that's the very first thing that we can do second our families must understand that charity begins at home okay if we expect that uh, we should raise a generation which is sound enough which is healthy enough which is practicing good menstrual hygiene so it is the responsibility of the parents not just the mother it is the responsibility of the parents to educate their girl to educate their sons that uh, yes uh, these are the products available and we should not have a social stigma around it we should not uh, uh, discriminate anyone just because of menstruation hai na? Uh, no other person should give a bad look to any girl just because she is bleeding she is menstruating right a support must be lent by the family a support should be lent by the society functional toilets should be made available everywhere whether these are the educational institutions or public places there should be easy access to good hygienic toilets everywhere in each of those toilets there should be a stock of sanitary napkins available poor access to safe tools for menstruating management menstrual management the uh, the tools the products must be easily available maybe at a local shop medical shops everywhere one should not has to have to run or rush few kilometers away just to grab the access to this kind of products right together we can and we will and uh, i am uh, strong enough and determined enough that uh, yes i will put an end to the stigma around menstruation are you all with me so i shared a small little incident which happened to me some 15 years back and uh, if you were also ridiculed or if you also experienced something unwelcoming around menstruation, do let me know in the comment section below. Share your ideas. How can we get rid of this menstrual stigma in our country, prevalent in our country, prevalent in the world? How we can make a safer and a happier place for women and uh, more such ideas are welcome. Do let me know in the comment section. You can reach out to me on my mail address. That is maria.khan at vedantu.com. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this session with me. If you are keen enough to join Vedantu, don't forget to use my coupon code. That is MACPRO, M-A-K-P-R-O, because it is going to give you 10% additional discount. How you can avail this discount? Click on the link which has been posted in the description box okay and uh, click on the link you will get to see different offers different courses pro pro light pro plus and pro classic you can choose any one of those and you select my coupon code and you avail the discount that's it from my side but you let's meet up with more such interesting topics in the upcoming session till then allah hafiz and keep watching vedantu bye bye